Okay, and we're rolling. Uh, this is Omar, owner of Mena Photography. And today I'm hanging out with El Paso's Mariachi. Enrique Aragón from Mariachi Alegre. Mariachi Alegre. Ignacio Hernandez, Mariachi Alegre also. Excellent. So um, you guys are the heroes of the of the weddings. When, you know, yeah, it's like it, it never fails. Uh, everybody's just eating or hanging out or drinking at the cocktail hour. And then when you guys start playing and you walk in, you all eyes are on you guys. Um, how, how did you guys get started in, in Mari or in music in general, and then mariachi specifically? Uh, so I started back in um, high school. So they had a, a mariachi program at, at Bowie High School. So that's where I started playing mariachi. Uh, I did my four years there playing mariachi. So right at my sophomore year, I started playing professional outside the, the, the high school group. So from there, I started. Uh, professionally outside for high school mariachi. Um, that was back in 95. In 95, six. yeah. How about yourself, Mr. E? I started in sixth grade. You would choose an instrument. I chose trumpet. Went through the whole thing, middle school, high school, got into uh, the marching band stuff. So I was kind of, I had, I was very fortunate enough to have like really, really good teachers. Mr. Mayor, Marty Mayor from the high school. And, um, I just, I really like the music. I thought it was, I don't know, I, something drew me to it. After that, my sister was in mariachi at the time. She was one year older than me. And she said that there's an opportunity to go to Guadalajara. If you'd like to go. Oh, man. How would you not want to go? Yeah. yeah. So I said, okay, yeah, let me see the music and see if I can adapt. And, and yeah, that was from the first, uh, Rehearsal, I thought, okay, it's pretty, it's, pretty, it's um, I liked it, and, and it's funny because before that, I wasn't into, like, Mexican music, or, you know, you get the long road trips, and, oh, playing, sure, yeah, they're playing, you know, uh, Que Buena, and you're like, ah, can I just hear the cue, or whatever, yeah, <laughs> but, um, no, then after that, after I started, I don't know, I guess it's in your blood when you're Mexican, so, yeah, I, I after that, I just enjoyed it, and, that trip and so. Wow, so I, I wasn't aware that Bowie High School had a mariachi. Uh, is it still going? Yes, it's still going. Oh, wow. Now, uh, I don't know if you see, but now a lot of high schools have a mariachi program now. So back then it was just like two, three high schools only. And now I'm assuming like almost all high schools have a mariachi program already. Oh, that's yeah. how, how exciting. Yeah, and now they have a UYL competition, they go to states. Like marching bands, uh, they do you well, a uh, concert, they go to state, now mariachi can do the same. Wow. So a couple of years ago, they started taking it to that level, taking it more formal. So now the mariachi world has evolved in the education industry, in the education program. So um, there, I mean, as a wedding photographer, I'm constantly taking pictures of mariachis and stuff like that. And um, Tell me, how did uh, Mariachi Alegre start, though? Okay, so um, they started 30 years ago, October of 1994. Um, a group of uh, high school, college people got together, and they were from different groups, and they decided to do a, a group. Uh, they all got together, and they started, um, uh, they named it Mariachi Alegre, and now they, they started back then. I did join the group two years later, um, and then from there, two years after that, I became owner of the group. Mm. So the past, what, 20, 26, 27 years, uh, I've been owner of Mariah Chalet. Uh, we've had different uh, members throughout all these 30 years. Uh, people come to us, they start doing mariachis, they graduate from high school, they get a, a job, they take off, uh, people get married. We've had some couples meet in the Mariachi Alegre and get married and, and now they and left the graduate wow now, <laughs> they're married with kids uh, and they live here in the Mariachi I think there's like four couples that that happened to um seven years ago uh Iggy joined, joined Alegre and now he's uh our musical director he's the one the one that's guiding us uh with the new music new styles new arrangements uh so, so yeah um, and I'm one of the trumpet players, and he is uh, our new trumpet player. 
What, what are some uh, events? I mean, you guys do all kinds of events. What are some of the events that you love to do? Um, we like concerts. Uh, we like to do the concerts, uh, company singers. Uh, last year, uh, with Company Ana Barbara. Oh, wow. Uh, Chicken Joe Paso and, and their promoters uh, contact us to accompany her. Also, and that's in concert with Company uh, Majo Aguilar mm. from the Aguilar Empire. You know? Yeah. Uh, so we accompanied them, them to a uh, concert at the uh, Cesar Chavez uh, Theater. So that was a fun, exciting um, performance that we had to do. We had to prepare for that show and, and, and do a good job. And we did something in Paso under their eyes. So and the directors liked that. They went to talk to us and they really loved our performance. And our, our, the way we, we did, we, we, the results, the new results of all that. Uh, we had to do some adjustments last minute, and we adapted to all those changes. And Valeria uh, did really well uh, on stage. How exciting! Uh, what are there any other uh, musicians that we would know that you have performed with? Um, um, Amanda Limon. Um, uh, the gentleman from um, it was like a winter fest. He had like a he had his own like uh, I guess it was a concert. But too bad we had that kind of sweet. <laughs> oh no! December, yeah, I know we're not in the plaza, but yeah, he was a very nice gentleman. He was uh, Lorenzo Mendez. Lorenzo Mendez. Okay. Yeah, he used to be with Banda Limon, um, and he left, and I think he was a head of Chiquis. Oh, okay. Uh, and he came to El Paso, and we did that winter festival for him as well. So on stage, uh, then, and uh, we like we also like we get contacted by Las Cruces over there. I guess I don't know what it's called. Or, Oh, not tourism, but it's a non organization that they do uh, Christmas concerts. Oh, okay. Uh, they do the the, the posadas, uh, uh, everything related to the posadas during Christmas. We've done it every year. Except this, uh, last year, it was a little bit um, last minute concert that they weren't able to organize it properly, but we've been doing that uh, for the past years. So, and it's fun to go out to Las Vegas to do those events for the community. How, how many members do you guys have? We have 10 members. Uh, what is it? Uh, three rhythm players, two trumpets, and five violins. Oh, okay. So it's mostly violin heavy, but they do sound really good together. I, I could only imagine just the. Um, hold on. I'm trying to put together. Uh, I had like a million thoughts happen all at once, and they just got crammed in my head. Very, very, very common. Um, when when it comes to like the culture of mariachi, have you ever, have you guys seen uh, mariachi kind of crossing over into other things uh, musically, or even just like type, different types of events? Oh yes, yeah, so there, there's there's um, the mariachi scene here in El Paso is very different from the mariachi scene in Austin, San Antonio, Dallas over there, and it's very different also to LA, um, even to across the border in. It's, it's very different to the, um, what you're asked to perform, what you're asked to do, which each day is, is different. Um, they prefer, um, sometimes people prefer, you know, what's on the mainstream, what's on the radio. Mm -hmm. Other people prefer classic, I think the classic stuff. We were talking out there about the wedding, so mm -hmm. you know, that's it's a, a separate genre to the manga. Gotcha. So it's just adapting to the different scene. That you, where you're at, or what you're, what you're um, asked to to perform for the crowd that you're asked to perform. But yes, it's crossed over to England. It's crossed over to uh, fusion. We have a local band called Tribes here. So they, they do a lot of fusion stuff. It's a uh, it's mariachi kind of oriented, but then it's got like you know other elements of other different genres. So there's but yes, it is crossing over. There's there's a, an all there's all women group, all feminine groups in, in LA. Trio that uh, passes by and performs a lot over here in town. It's the trio area, so it's, you know it's, um, it's everywhere. Which is good. Yeah, that is. It. And now um, to kind of focus back on um, weddings. Yeah. And now, if I uh, am getting married and I've never hired a mariachi group, what are some things that I should know? Uh, you know, other than just being like, "Hey, are you free?" Uh, what are some things that, that you you 
could educate the audience in what they should prepare for, like, you know, do they have a set list or, you know, or do people normally just say, can you be there from this time to this time? And then they just let you do your thing. Yeah. So as a business owner, I do get the leads. I do get the calls. I do talk to the clients. I do advise them on our pricing, um, the process of the deposit, the, and then in the final payment of the performance. Uh, we do assign all of my contracts that I have on the calendar and agenda. They all have contracts. So, uh, so any person trying to get married out there or trying to find a mariachi, I will recommend for you to talk to them to see how many are actually going to show up. Oh. Because that's a big problem that people see a group of 10 and then only five show up. Oh, so, gotcha. And then it's a big surprise, but of course, uh, the wedding has to go on and they have to take the five piece mariachi. So make sure that you ask how many people are actually going to the performance. Make sure that you do a contract and secure that mariachi uh, legally on paper uh, so they won't just cancel on you and not show up. Uh -huh. um, and then, um, yeah, and, and just uh, secure them with a deposit. And uh, with the same contract for both of you, then uh, it should be no issue, technically. On the song list, uh, some people uh, do send us their favorite song. And, and we'll acknowledge that and do those, those songs that they're requesting. If they're mariachis, because nowadays they're asking for songs that they're not even mariachis, and they expect for us to do. And of course, if it's something simple, we'll we'll try to pick it up. Right. Not a problem, but some songs are songs that we can do because um, we had a when in New Year's uh, when the band came from uh, to Utah, they wanted us to do the, the fight song for them. And of course, there's only two trumpets compared to the whole band marching right. band. So it was something not possible. Right. Especially two days in advance. <laughs> uh, but we, we try to accommodate the, the clients as best as we can. Uh, if we're able and we have the time, we'll, we'll do it for them. Um, so yeah, so so just uh, make sure that you do a contract and secure the, the mediation. Um, and, and is there kind of like a minimum of what you guys do? Like, like a I, I don't like uh, when you rent a uh, uh, limo, they say you have to rent us for three hours. So right now with Alegre, it's an hour minimum. Uh, so we can do as many hours as we wish. We also do an hour and a half uh, performances. So we've been doing that lately. Um, and in case it's during the day, you want a serenata uh, for at, the, at your workplace or, or even at funerals, uh, we can do serenades during the week. Um, so, so that's the minimum I get to serve it, but on the weekend, uh, it's per hour performance, as many as, as you want. We, yes, and also to, to go back to the, the previous question, uh, I think clients should also kind of, if they find out that money actually, if you're trying to hire a place somewhere, be like uh, in a restaurant or wherever, for example, we play at a casino, we play at the rock week. We're available, available there if you want to come by and, and listen to us. Okay, like, yes, we're going to play, okay, we're going to hire Because sometimes you can see a Facebook post, you can see, you know, different types of things, and um, you might not get what you pay for. Right. So and we have we have videos. I think we have a contract of um, the minimum we're going to have there. So if, if it's not 10, it's going to be 8. If you're, if you're required 10, 10 would be there. And, of course, we always... Uh, show up in all the same looking. Yeah, the uh, traditional. Yeah. Yes, with, uh, you know, not somebody dressed in black or somebody dressed in blue or something like that. We're all the same. We're all kind of all ready to go. That's our, that's really what we, that's basically the best thing as, you know, when you hire us. Like, you, you know, you're going to get that for sure. Right. You're going to get the experience. Yes. And you're going to get the quality that you want to go if you would like to go see. You know, but that, that would be my recommendation to see what's going to show up. You, you mentioned um, the dress. Yeah. Are, are there people that actually don't show up? Uh, like they perform not in the traditional? Oh my gosh. Yes. There's different stories and I'm sure if you can tell you more, he's, he's the one that's dealing with the contract. And like, but I want you all there dressed the same, okay? And I want you guys all something that you would think it's so... It's just, uh, you, un, you would think it's just understood. Yes. yes. But you get surprised with people that clients sometimes give me a hard time because they already hired somebody else that showed up with five-piece group, four-piece group, 
they showed up with all different uniforms. Oh, right. uh, so when they come with us, they, they want to play and everything like that. I want you guys to show up with this. And what's cool about Alegre, um, we have maybe like seven or eight different uniforms. So, and, and I like to to change around. You know, I don't want to take black to every single performance. We have different uniforms. We have like a lot of during the, during the summer, we have shadow shirts. So we do a combination of, of different colors, different trajes, uh, to keep it different. You know, um, Marichi should not just be black. Uh, there's so many colors out there, so many trajes, and we invested on our suits to look good. Right. right. With shadow hats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so so we, we invested a lot of money to, to, to look good. And we heard this from other mariachi Latino, like, you guys look good, maybe you guys look sharp. Like, yeah. It's an effort to get everybody, to get a 10 piece group to do exactly the same uniform and do our best. And, and what's cool about Marisha Alegre that a lot of people don't have, everybody in the group sings. So, oh, that's cool, yeah. So you just don't have one person singing the whole hour. You have 10 people on and off singing. Uh, we have photos, we have uh, big singers. Uh, so everybody gets to show off. Uh, so you just don't get bored with one voice in the whole hour. It so, makes a difference because uh, there there have been some. I mean, I I see them I see mariachis all the time, and there have been some where you only have like one or two people that that primarily sing, and everybody just kind of. Now, um, I did have a question. What? How do you guys feel when uh, somebody grabs the microphone to sing along with you guys? It, it all depends. It varies at different parties. Sometimes uh, some family members carry really good voices, really good singers. Yes. <laughs> and, and they go from that. generation to generation and, and they want to sing, they love to sing. But also we have situations that the uh, client tells us, don't let anybody sing. Oh, okay. So, so, <laughs> um, and, and also the clients tell us, okay, I don't want to model that. I don't want this song. I don't want this song. And it's fine. Dude. We'll follow whatever. You're the boss. So we'll, we'll play whatever song you want. If you, you want us to sing uh, for us to accompany your, your family members, we'll do it. If you tell us, don't allow anybody to sing, we'll do that too. Um, speaking rock, it's one of the um, places where they don't allow to get singers to, to sing. And just because they don't want us to, uh, the people go see the mariachi and not all this audience. Out gotcha. There. Uh, and you know that there's people that sing really good and some people sing not that great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the people in the audience, they want to go see the mariachi. So, so, and, and we're good with that. You know, um, we like to perform, we like to to do our part, and and, we, and also we follow the rules. Whatever you want us to do, we'll, we'll follow. We'll follow those those suggestions that you have for us. And and I think it helps to know that too, because um, like I, I would have again, I've never uh, hired a mariachi group, so I I wouldn't know that that there might be somebody that I don't want pick up players like oh I, and i could already think of like if i were to go you know to a wedding uh, with family i'm like oh yeah this guy you no know, you know i i i understand that too and everybody has a fee oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> after a couple of drinks they think they're yeah they, 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 yeah they're... and there's been times when we you show up to a family party and everybody sings um, and we, there's we don't even get a chance to sing and that's okay with us if you hired us you know you want us to play uh, songs for you, for you all to sing. That's not an issue. That's whatever the client wants. Then there's times where you, you know, you kind of don't know how to bring it up, and you're like, okay, like, all right, well, thank you, and uh, we'll, we'll try to change the tempo. They're otra, yeah. yeah <laughs> try to start something really quick, and then let's see, okay, and then no, no, no so if, if whatever is their rules, whatever they want, we'll try to do, we'll try to accommodate. But uh, yeah, there is a, uh, there is like a little. So then you gotta look out, like, okay, like. Party back to what the clients right. want. Right. To what the clients want. But yeah, it's the we'll, world. We'll, the client, the client's the boss. Whatever you want. <laughs> What's cool about Alegre that um, we, if you give us a request of songs, we won't follow that list. If you don't, we'll do a show for you. We'll do, uh, and Nick is really good at doing that. If, if there's an audience that they're just watching us and they're excited and they're clapping every single song, then we'll do a show for them. We have uh, different uh, popurris that we can do, female popurris, uh, male popurris, uh, different, uh, um, different arrangements, different styles. So we'll do a show. If you're watching us uh, and, and paying attention to us, we'll do a great show for you. There's no request. Um, and then, of course, there's a, 
bride or groom or, or the or the or, or the owner uh, wants us to do a certain song, then we'll do it. Or the audience if they're asking for a certain song. But if not, we'll take over and, and do a show for them. And if they respond to those style of music, uh, we'll do it. Uh, we do have some some songs that are not traditional mayashi that we've done and people love it. We have the uh, uh, borrachera from Little Joe. We do that and people love it. They dance and they remember their, their little Norteño uh, uh, music. We do have a country um, song as well. Um, can get can get my ass out of you. Uh, so we do that. Uh, so we have different songs that we, we, we go uh, and we do the, the favorite ones of uh, Juan Gabriel, Vicente. Of course, so all yeah. those great songs. Uh, we, we do for the audience and we try to do a show and and we if the audience get gets excited, involved with us, uh, we, we respond back to it. We dance on the songs. We also do a popurri of uh, Angeles Azules. Mm. It's, it's a popurri uh, cumbias, and, and we do all that show. We dance, we have fun with it. Um, and, and with the idea, the clients are having fun with us too. Is there any particular song that you love to perform? Uh, I like more the, the, the Chanji song, the musical song. Challenging song, but it's something that we've done already for years. It was there before I even got there. Um, uh, there's a traditional, um, I guess, the more common uh, Carter song with with my two daughters and my family, stuff like that. The proportions that we're able to combine with a set of different songs put together with a nice little flow, and there's a theme always to it. We, we have a lot of those that we have to. Be We try to put them on the, in front of us on stage, you know, we put in front of us what's best for the group and they're, they're awesome and it's like, but um, yeah, those, those are the things that I like to enjoy playing. Also, um, you never know what they're going to ask, what the clients are going to ask for, right, you know, later on, in, like the after 10 o'clock, you know, they may hear the que de la is or la ropa, something that's not, something that's kind of rare, but like, okay, like, they're gonna, they're gonna be, right? they're gonna get, get the party going on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so it's, I, I like that too, I like that aspect of it too. But that, those are the favorite for me. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Wayne's World, but yeah. there there was a scene where Wayne picks up the guitar and he starts playing uh, Stairway to Heaven and then they point to a sign that says <laughs> no Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. Is there any song that you guys just feel like that about? Go ahead. <laughs> and it's probably a collective mariachi world song that we all are kind like, of like crazy. everybody's like oh yeah. okay i'll do it i would say mariachi local. oh okay yes and then you know it's kind of like all right well that's around a couple of uh, minutes but i would say that's something that i hear you know around the mariachi community like oh that will maybe you know i know all these yeah I think that's the, what people usually ask for. And now we put it back on them. Like, if you ask for it, you have to dance. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And like, if you're asking for this song, you need to just get up and dance because they ask for it and they just sit down throughout the song. Like, come on, like, you want something happy, uh, you know, get up and dance and do something. Enjoy it. No, I know that there's a lot of uh, younger mariachi groups that, that are out. Um, so, like, somebody who's established like mariachi like it but how many events do you do like on a typical saturday it's it, it varies throughout the, the year mm -hmm. uh the summer probably maybe 10 hours really weekend. um even even more obviously weekend it's non-stop for like three days oh my gosh um but usually during the summer, everybody does quinceañeras or weddings during, during, during the, the summer, so, so we get really busy. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Along with, in the summer, the Speaker Rock starts, you know, asking multiple days from us. So, you know, we'll be there Sunday, then we'll be there Tuesday, sometimes we've even had a third day on Thursday. Wow. But, uh, and those are not just one hour performances, they're like Sundays, four hours, Tuesdays, three hours. Oh, man. You know, so. And then going with the graduation parties, all this stuff in the summer, all the weddings, all that type of stuff. So that we start 
you know, early and kind of late, but, you know, that's something that I really like coming into an established group, like you mentioned. Um, it's a little bit, um, you're not as busy as maybe like somebody, you know, really going for it, not with a bunch of like, we're, we're all professional, we all have our careers, most okay. of us do. So some of us cannot be available at certain times. We can make it happen, we, you know, the client asks for it, of course, but um, that's what I like you know, about this space here. You know, it wasn't, you know, when you started at noon, that's a, and that was 20 years ago for me when I started. We started at noon and at four in the morning. Oh my gosh. But nowadays, there's a lot more uh, groups involved, so now we can, you know, we can structure a group that can be really good, like your the client's going to benefit from, we're going to benefit from it because now we're with a larger group. We can, you know, ask a little bit more. And that's, that's better for everybody, all, all the parties involved. And, and 10 is uh, considered a large mariachi group? Yes. Yeah. On the larger groups, that's why we extend it. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's a lot of bigger groups out there, not here in El Paso, but yeah, um, it's probably extended for a large group. No, um, and again, kind of staying with that whole, you guys being established, um, a lot of my clients, they book me up a year, year and a half in advance, um, gives them time to pay, you know, and, um, but, uh, is, are you guys, uh, like that for you, you, you're booked well in, in advance that someone's thinking of hiring would actually, especially during like maybe mother's day or whatever, they need to reach out now. Yeah, of course, uh, I do have already booked gigs for next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had a client that we just did this past weekend. He booked us for his mom's uh, birthday uh, this past Saturday and next year's uh, daughter's quinceanera. Smart. So he booked us for those yeah. two events at, at one time uh, to reserve it. So we get you to get your deposit, we do the reservation, send the contract, and we're set. If you book us now, uh, we'll restrict the price for, for next year. So if we raise up the price next year, you're already set with the price of, of 2024. So that's an, uh, I guess a plus for you to book in, in advance. Uh, so you can get exact date and time uh, and get the price of, of this year. Uh, that's one of the biggest issues that I'm pretty sure with you as well as a photographer that uh, everybody wants that prime time. From, oh yeah. From six to eight, everybody wants that time. Uh, for us, uh, that's what gets books for us. And then from there, if you still want the mariachi, then you need to do before or after. Um, but yeah, the sooner you book, the better, so you can either accept time that you're equipped. And that, that's, I think, uh, something important because um, after the, like, post-pandemic, uh, I mean, I did work during the pandemic when they had, like, the decreased, like, the 20% and the 30%. And, you know, I didn't get sick with COVID until last year. It was, you know, I, I, I was so grateful, but I was around COVID all the time. You know, because I didn't, fortunately, I didn't stop working. And then um, uh, I also, I'm a destination photographer, so I shoot outside of El Paso a lot. And when I would go to Austin, no masks. You know, they, they were just, yeah, yeah, they were, they were, they were just living it, living it up. And, you know, go, sh go shoot out there and I've got a mask on and nobody's got masks. Everybody's sharing the same utensils. And I'm like... Oh, please don't get sick. Please don't get sick. And gracias a Dios, I did it. I don't even know. I mean, you could get it anyway, but fortunately, you know, hopefully we never go through any anything like that again. And, uh, you know, in a respect to people that we've lost and all that. But um, when when it comes to, uh, uh, like, the studio, I only book one event for the day. And I have friends that they'll book four or five weddings in one day. I, I even just the thought of it, like, my head just, like, I, I can't imagine because I... Just like yourself, how, how, you guys have been around for 30 years. How many of your clientele have you had that long? Or had within, you know, they've been my client for 10 years. They've been my client for 15 years. And fortunately for me, I'm the same way. You know, it's like I've, I've done the, the quince, high school senior, high school pictures, and then the, the wedding, you know, and, and the maternity. That's, you know, for me, it's like I, I, I find that blessing in that. Um, do you guys, how, how do you? Like, do you guys have clients like that? Yes. Um, we have one lady that, that has been with us for the longest time ever. I don't even remember how long. Uh, probably over 10 years. 
Uh, uh, she books us at her personal parties and she recommends us to anybody that wants a mariachi. Um, she she works at Alexis and, and she any party at Alexis were there were there mariachi. Oh nice. Uh, her personal parties were there. Any recommendation from her friends, uh, bosses, anybody out there was were there. So so she keeps us always. Uh, she keeps you busy. She keeps us busy. She's yeah. our VIP clients. Uh, that's the reason we learned Borrachena because she loves that song. Ah. So we learned it for her and we played each time she goes see us play. And she goes to speak and to see us play. So whenever she's she's there, we, we'll, we'll, we'll perform it for her. And we have other clients like that as well. We have a client in, in, in San Elisario. He books us for his mom, his suegra, and for Mother's Day weekend. That's oh. And then plus any other special parties. So there we've, we've always been there with we're, we're Mariachi. Um, They've gone with other groups because we weren't able, we weren't available uh, because they booked us leave. And right right after they book anybody else, they come back to us. Nice. So, so that has happened twice, uh, but they always come back to us and they're loyal to us. There's those parties that you play, you have fun, they give you to drink, they give you to, uh, to eat. So so it's, it's a party with them. It's, you have fun, you have fun playing with them, and we're good friends. There's pictures and videos of us and them. Uh, having a great time with a, with an audience, you know, so it's so it, it's fun to it's fun when they treat us well, so we have a good time with our audience, uh, with our owners. It, it's 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 good. Do do you guys travel? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we do travel. We've done it in the past. Uh, uh, we we've gone to Milan, Odessa, lately, uh, Las Cruces, uh, down the street. Uh, so we travel out there. Um, not a lot as we wish, uh, but yeah, um, once again, like uh, Matthew said earlier, that we are professional, we do have our day job, so it's a little bit hard to travel, but uh, if it's possible and we can get the days off, we'll, 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 we'll do it. That's a, that sounds great. Um, so what's the future for Mariachi Alega? Do you guys have anything in the back burner or something cool that we're going to do? So this year, uh, 2024, it's, it's uh, Alega's uh, 30th year anniversary. Uh, so our plan is to do uh, hopefully a concert uh, for our community and also invite our, our ex uh, members from Mariachi Alegre to join us on stage and, and, and be part of it. And also so it can give us an opportunity to show our talent to, to the community and, and see who, who we are and what we've done in the past time. And, and, and I guess for future, um, grow as, as musicians, as a group. Um, to me, I think it will be more like a, um, let's say like a thank you to all our regulars. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because uh, we have we have plenty of, of people that come by, like, uh, I say, like and Miss Pat, uh, she's, you know, biggest supporter, and people like that that have always, you know, you start a new uh, restaurant or, or a new place that you're going to play, and they show up, you know, they're always positive. I feel that I think that would be awesome kind of just to, you know, get your tickets, show up here, you know, uh, you know, you're going to have on stage, you're going to have us, you might have some surprise, surprises from the past, you know, all of your favorite songs, and, and then maybe show off at the end, you know, what we can do, you know, as far as music and, and uh, vocally and performance wise. So, you know, just kind of, I, I do to show thanks and, you know, for 30 years, especially as long as I've been here, especially in VK also, like that's uh, a lot to say for me, you know, spending some years being the owner. Of course. And, you know, treating you, you know, you get a new, a new batch of players, and you, you know, now it's a new team we have to form, and you're, you know, kind of starting over, but not really continuing the traditions. And we have a lot of members that have them, like you said, and, those traditions, you know, it'd be cool to have them back on stage, you know, performing with us, you know, show them and stuff like that. I don't see how there's no way that they wouldn't, because uh, when, when you're a musician, you're, I mean, you may not be performing or playing, but you always, it's always in you. You know, yeah. they're going to, and to get the chance to get the microphone and sing again, oh, I'm sure they're going to jump at it. You know, it sounds like it's going to be a great uh, celebration. And, you know, if anything, just a uh, uh, um, testimony to the, I mean, 30 years, that's pretty amazing. Um, how t how can people reach you? So uh, the Mariachi Allegra line, it's 915-204-8050. Uh, 
That's 915-204-8050. You're also welcome to go to our website, to mariachialegre.com. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. You can send us a direct message from our website. Uh, we do have a Facebook, uh, Mariachi Alegre, uh, that you can visit us. There's a lot of pictures, videos in there. Or Instagram, also Mariachi Alegre. So um, I guess I, I did get lucky to get my full name in there. Yeah, right. Uh, so, so you can find us in Mariachi Alegre, one, one word, technically. Uh, and we have pictures. We also upload uh, any events that we do uh, that we're going to have. They're usually posted on Facebook and our, and our, and our wall. I did have a, a, a comment before we close. Um, when, when, uh, as a photographer, I deal a lot with a client, uh, from helping them with vendors. And it's also just my, I mean, that's the whole purpose of the podcast is just to kind of introduce, uh, you know, 